Hey guys, EVP Man here, and today is Microsoft Surface Go Day. This is Microsoft's new tablet that should compete with both the iPad Pro as well as the newly announced Samsung Galaxy Tab 4. So let's check it out and see if you should consider it as your next tablet. So now Microsoft has uh, had tablets for a very long time, but they really have been uh, targeting the business uh, side of the consumer spectrum. As you look at uh, the name Microsoft Surface, they do have a Surface, they have a Surface Pro, and a Surface Book. The Go is the version of the tablet that is really targeted to compete against the iPad and then also the newly released, uh, or announced rather, Samsung Galaxy Tab 4. But you know Samsung has a Tab 3, Tab 2, and has all these other tabs. So this tablet is smaller than the Pro. This tablet does share some very similar features as the Pro. And it may be something that you want to consider if you're looking for something that's this small but shares a lot of the features of the big boys and some more expensive tablets. So let's do an unboxing, check out all the features. We also have the tablet uh, keyboard, which we're going to look at as well separately. So um, after this video, check out the other one. And we'll also do a comparison between this video, the 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 actual Surface Go as well as the iPad and if you should consider or not. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get uh, notified and that little bell icon so you know that uh, the next video is available and you can see it. Let's check it out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to get notified when new videos become available. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the specs here, at least what's on the box set initially. You have an Intel Pentium Gold processor, uh, 4415Y. You do have 128 gig of storage and then 8 gigabytes of RAM. And this is model 1824. Uh, some of the things that you'll see here also mentioned is that the fact that it is running uh, Windows 10, but it's uh, a version called Home in S mode. And we're going to see what that means. It has the power supply, 802.11 and Bluetooth uh, 4.1. All right, so let's check and see what's inside the box. Go ahead and open this up. This is kind of like a little shaky shaky that you have to do here. And here's our tablet. Um, all right, let's move this out of the way. First impression, small. I'm telling you, thin and super light too. Uh, we'll have to look at that in a second. So we'll put that aside. In the box we have, looks like some miscellaneous information. Let's see what we have here. power adapter. Looks like the same for the Surface uh, Book and Pro that I have, so I'll put that aside. Let's see if there's anything else. That's pretty much it. So interestingly with this, as we put this aside, uh, you don't get for the price, and I'll have to post the price on the channel, but all you get is your power adapter, you get your tablet, and you get this little miscellaneous book. So there is no surface pen included so that's going to be an additional probably 100 bucks to get that uh, so this is really focused towards the same market that you see with the ipad because if you think about it the apple pencil isn't included with the ipad you have to purchase that separately the same thing is true when you're thinking about um, well actually not if you think about the samsung tabs that have any kind of S Pen capability, they're included. So as, uh, t actually Samsung has one up on these guys. So let's go ahead and start this baby up. We'll take a look at all the features. We'll go over more specs and we'll see how it performs. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we have power available because I don't know what the battery state on the device is. But looking at the power cord, uses the same magnetic connector. It's a pulled away uh, model uh, that we see on the Surface uh, Book, Surface Pro and Microsoft Surface. Here you have your prongs for your electrical outlet there. So it's pretty simple. So I'm going to plug this in, have this ready, and then we'll start it up. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is kind of remove the plastic, because I know some of you like to see that process and like to hear that process. So I'll move that aside. And initial impression uh, is, again, very light. You'll notice that you have about a one inch bezel, a little bit less than a one inch bezel going all the way around. So that's kind of a slight disappointment. Um, as you look at the iPad and you look at the Samsung tablets, the bezel is far uh, smaller. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and power it up and then we'll go over you know, all the features. We'll look at all the, you know, the ports that it has and all the controls. So here we have the power button. So we're gonna go ahead and 
power it up so you can see what the startup sequence is. Pretty fast. Let's get that at an angle right there. So standard, almost a standard Windows logo, not quite. Again, this is that Windows 10 version that is the S version. So it's probably a lighter version of Windows. But it's supposed to run all the same apps, so we'll see what that means. I do have the 128 version uh, storage and then also the 8 gig. So I'm hoping that this will perform well. Hopefully this is not one of these items that uh, is like some of the older generation. So startup process is Windows all the way. So you can see where it says, you know, just a moment, please. And it's probably going to go through the process of setting up the the OS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pause the video for just for a second, let it go through its process, and I'll let you know how long it takes. So I don't know how much of this is coming across, but you're getting Kotana's walking you through the setup process. So it actually uses its voice to prompt the setup of the Wi-Fi and all the configuration. And I just wanted to show you how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. Now I'm still going through the setup process, but I just wanted to pause because this is one of the things I'm really, really impressed on. Uh, some of the things that I do um, in my business career is look at user experience, um, ethnography, also design, and one of the things I'm thoroughly impressed is with the actual process that Microsoft has gone through to walk you through configuring your device. So you're actually getting Cortana speak, uh, prompt you to set up your Wi-Fi, prompt you about keyboard settings and it's not just saying choose a setting but it's actually indicating you currently have US as your keyboard would you like to change it and then after you do that it's actually asking would you like to add another uh, keyboard type and all this is voice input based so you can interact either by type or by voice incredibly impressed because this makes just configuring a device like this real simple now one could argue if you think about an iPad, that there's not a lot to configure. You just power up an iPad and it goes. But this is, again, how Windows does things, but they've made Windows setup a lot easier with this model. Now, as part of your setup process, you also have the ability to link your phone to your PC. Uh, and this is simply done just by simply inputting your phone number. So we're going to check this out as well. All right, so now let's take a look at the specs, and why not use the tablet for that? So let's take a look at some of the things that I think are going to be important to all of you. So first of all, the display is a 10-inch display, as you can see here, um, 1820 by 1200 display, so it's decent resolution. has 217 uh, pixels and an aspect ratio of 3.2. 10-point uh, multi-point touch, so that means that you can actually use 10 fingers or 10 points on the screen can be touched and then they will all interact and be uh, recognized, which is, <laughs> that means two hands on the screen. Great if you're playing some kind of games where you have two players, one on each side. I've done this like with hockey and things like that. It, the storage options that you're looking at is 64 or 128. The model that I have is the 128. Uh, from a dimension perspective, it's very comparable to, again, the tablets of this size. So this year, you obviously know that the Surface Pro is around these dimensions. Uh, the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S4 um, is going to be the same dimensions. Uh, so uh, you're seeing a lot of entrance, if not existing, tablets in this space. From a connection perspective, you have a USB-C, a 3.5 um, headphone jack, a Surface Connect port, which is at the very bottom. Uh, you have your uh, cover port. Um, you have micro uh, SD card reader as well. And again, that uh, for me, the USB-C port not only will it allow you to display, but it's also going to allow you to charge your device. So you can either charge with the existing uh, connection or not. So uh, for those of you who are concerned about uh, solid state drive, and some of the other tech specs, they're available on, on their site. We'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see this too. So from a spec perspective, it's running Windows 10. Now this is something that's important, so listen up on this one, Windows 10. Uh, what I've noticed is that many of the applications that Chrome, Safari, um, VLC, if you think about some of these applications that you install on Windows machines today will not work because Windows 10 S mode is a little unique. You have to have your application certified. Now, I want to say this one more time. It will not work. However, there's always a however, there's a workaround. So I'm going to have a video that's going to talk about that workaround because if you notice right here in the bottom, let me bring this up, I have Chrome installed.
took me a little to figure it out, uh, but Microsoft does a good job of pointing it out in their software if you actually take a look, really close look. It's in small print. So uh, again, out of the box, you're not going to be able to install Windows 10 applications that have not been certified with Windows 10 in S mode. And that just means that they are optimized, low power, and it's not going to crash the operating system. In this case, I've been able to disable that so that I can install the applications that I use, like Chrome, as well as some of the other ones that I look at. It does have a 33, uh, a 30-day trial of Office 365, and I'm actually a Office 360 user. So um, as soon as I logged in, all my software was pushed. Everything is synced. Uh, my wallpaper is just like on my other uh, machines because I have a Windows desktop as well, as well as a Surface Book and Surface Pro. So everything has been synchronized, and that's really, really nice. Uh, the other thing that we'll highlight is uh, Gorilla Glass. I am going to have some screen protectors that we're going to test on this. You you're supposed to get up to nine hours of playback uh, for video. We're going to be testing that and see how that works. And then let's see what else you'd want to hear. Oh, uh, you can get the, the other version. Uh, the lower version is either four gig or eight gig. I got the eight gig uh, just uh, for this test. And then again, all these other things we did talk about, except for the fact that the camera does support facial recognition. So unfortunately, you do have to register with this device so it doesn't pick up your profile from your desktop if you already have it. Uh, there's no fingerprint reader. Uh, front facing camera is five megapixels, rear facing is eight, and then you have a single microphone. Now, the Surface Book and the Surface Pro do a fantastic, outstanding job when it comes to uh, like uh, WebEx, uh, the also Zoom, and I actually use mine in my meetings as if it was a speakerphone because of the mics just pick up great. This one only has one, so we'll have to see how this performs as I use it for business. You have Intel graphics, and then here are all the details about the casing, and you know you can definitely see this online. So uh, again, does not include the Surface Pen. So, or the Surface Mouse or the Surface Keyboard. So that's gonna be a separate purchase. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the ports. All right, so now let's take a look at all of the, the gadgets and the ports with the tablet. Pardon my fingerprints, because I don't have a screen protector. I will have one that I'll do review and we'll see how good it does with fingerprint uh, kind of rejection. Uh, you have your camera, your mic, you have two speakers, and I'm gonna put them here in an angle so you can see it right there and you can see it right here on the corner. So front facing speakers, which I like, and I actually like the placement of them being in the glass because what you don't run into is the fact that if you're holding your tablet, you don't cover up your speakers. If you're holding it like this on your lap, you don't cover up your speakers, which is what happens with my iPad. So um, I think I'm gonna enjoy having it in the glass there. On this side, you have your charging port, USB-C, headphone jack. On the top, you have your volume rocker and your power button. On this side, you have nothing. And on the bottom, you have your proprietary Microsoft connection for the keyboard. Now, you may be asking, where do I put my micro SD? Well, if you open it up like this, and we're gonna have, here's a little latch where you open it up, that's where it's hidden. And this is pretty standard. This is how um, my Surface Pro uh, and the Surface, uh, the Surface that I've had in the past all have them hidden behind here. So that's a, a neat little way to tuck it away. You, you will notice that it has uh, this little, built-in kickstand, which goes down pretty far. So let me just, this is this is how nice it goes down. This is the angle, look at that angle. So that's also really cool. And then they're pretty sturdy. Even in my Surface, the ones that I have, I've had no issues with it. So oh, all in all, it, uh, it looks pretty good. So now let's take a look at the software. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a closer look at what's what comes with the Surface. So what you're seeing here, this desktop, because I've already logged in and I am an Office 365 user, it synchronized my wallpaper. So all my wallpapers are this across all my devices and I have four or five Windows devices. But what you'll see is that even though this is Windows 10 S, uh, I still have, again, the, the look and feel of a full Windows application. Now, everything is going to be working the same. I'm not going to go through every single function because, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is Windows. So you're running a full version, looks like a PowerPoint, uh, Publisher, uh, Excel, uh, you know, Word, Note. You also have Note, the, uh, the uh, Note application as well. And all these things are running as if it was a Windows device. You have the ability when you rotate the screen that it does flip over. And there, what I've noticed is that there's really no, I didn't get a sense of a tablet mode. It just is it's just working. And that's a function that comes in the Windows Surface Pro 
or Microsoft Surface Pro where you get a little message that tells you, hey, would you want to run in tablet mode? Over here in the very bottom, you have, again, some of the things that I have installed. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how do you install uh, these applications that are not allowed when you do the installation. Uh, you have your power settings here. You then also have your Wi-Fi, uh, your audio settings. And one of the things that um, I did immediately and I re recommend you do is as soon as you get this, do the Windows update. There's tons of updates. There's firmware updates. There's software updates that you need. That way you have the best running experience uh, with your um, actual Surface Go. So that's it guys just wanted to show you what the um, install process was the setup process what was in the box we're going to do comparisons over the next couple of days uh, with the iPad Pro uh, where we are also getting the tab s4 and we'll do a comparison and also we have some accessories in here and immediately after this video and I'm going to try to attach it to this video is how do you install applications that haven't been certified to work on the Surface Go so make sure you smash that subscribe button. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.